Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Peace, the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Today, we are announcing three impactful cases from my office in our nation's fight against the People's Republic of China's transnational repression activity. The first two criminal complaints that I am announcing shed further light on the extent of the PRC government's efforts to project its authoritarian worldview on the residents of this city and this country. The two complaints charge more than 30 officers with China's national police force, which is called the Ministry of Public Security, or the NPS, and two New York City residents with violations of US law. Unlike typical officers, the NPS officers who have been charged today are not focused on preventing crime. The NYPD opening an undeclared secret police station in Beijing. It would be unthinkable. Here's what we know happened inside the secret police station in Lower Manhattan. At the very least, the station was providing some government services, like helping Chinese citizens renew their Chinese driver's license. But to do even that, the law requires that individuals like the defendants who act as agents of a foreign government give prior notice to the Attorney General before setting up shop in New York City. Our office and the New York field office of the FBI, as we are the first law enforcement partners in the world to make arrests in connection with the Chinese government's overseas. As alleged, the defendants work together to establish an overseas police station in Manhattan's Chinatown on behalf of the Fuzhou branch of the Chinese government's national police force, the NPS. These defendants did China's bidding in secret while acting under the direction and control of, the, of an NPS official in China. Liu was enlisted in efforts to cause a purported Chinese fugitive to return to China. The second complaint I'm announcing charges 34 NPS officers who belong to a task force called the 9-1-2 Special Project Working Group. This task force isn't a normal police force. It doesn't protect people or combat crimes. It commits crimes, targeting Chinese democracy activists and dissidents located outside of the PRC, including right here in New York City. This task force operates as an internet troll farm, creating thousands of fake online personas, which they use in a coordinated plot to harass, disparage, and threaten dissidents and activists throughout the world. Today's arrests and disruptions show that the Department of Justice is committed to using the rule of law to hold accountable authoritarian state actors who seek to threaten the integrity of American public discourse and the right to free expression that underpins our nation's values. We are calling foul on conduct that should be out of bounds for any responsible nation state actor. The MPS is seen as the Chinese government's principal national police authority, but the actual role of the MPS, as you just heard, is broader extending to intelligence and national security operations far beyond China's borders, including the illicit transnational repression schemes that are the target of today's three actions. Across these cases, the multidimensional nature of the PRC's transnational repression playbook have played out in the charges we allege today. First, in the case you just heard, in the physical sense, the MTS established a concrete outpost an off-books police station right here in New York City to monitor and intimidate dissonance and other critics of the PRC within one of the United States' most vibrant diaspora communities. The complaint alleges that on behalf of the MPS, two New Yorkers opened and operated that so-called police station starting in February 2022. Next, in the virtual sense, the threat from the PRC manifested as its agents and operatives sought to interfere with online gatherings, online organizing, and other social media critiques of the PRC regime, going so far as to conspire with an employee 
of a U.S.-based technology company to compromise the privacy of online virtual meetings, which were being used by attendees as a modern-day means of public protest and the exercise of freedom of assembly. This fact pattern, in the case I am announcing, underscores the insider threat risk facing any U.S. company that does business in China and has employees based in China. In the second complaint, excuse me, in the second complaint just unsealed, we have charged 34 defendants with conspiring to harass and threaten U.S.-based critics of the PRC regime. The 34 defendants are MBS officers who are members of the 912 Special Project Working Group. The group's officers post, monitor, and update content on various social media platforms that mirror and amplify the PRC-approved public messaging. Using false names, these fake accounts disseminate and amplify messages to manipulate public perception. Urge anyone who's been targeted or approached by the Chinese government or by any other authoritarian regime to come to us for help. We want to hear from you. You can report this information to your local field office or reach out to us online at tips.fbi.gov. My name is David Sundberg. I'm the Assistant Director in Charge of the Washington Field Office of the FBI. The charges you've heard about today reveal a series of brazen criminal schemes directed by the Ministry of Public Security. One of the complaints unsealed today shows that 34 MPS officials have been charged with conducting a massive campaign to use social media to harass and threaten Chinese dissidents, amplify division among Americans, and undermine confidence in our democratic process. All of these cases share a lot in common, including Chinese officials working for and at the direction of the Chinese government and targeting people here on U.S. soil through threats, harassment, intimidation, and malign influence. The individuals charged today are operatives supporting the Chinese government's campaign to export repression and crush any criticism of its failings by trampling freedom of thought and expression, including here in the United States. Our partnerships are one of our greatest strengths and we will continue to use those to bring these cases to light. So thank you to those partners who provided assistance to us, including our private sector partners and our colleagues throughout the international intelligence and law enforcement community who are also battling the Chinese government's aggression. Additionally, I want to acknowledge all of the FBI employees, special agents, analysts, linguists, to name a few. All those who have played a part in these two Washington field office investigations and brought them to where they are today. At the FBI, we are focused on the actions of the Chinese Communist Party and its officers, not the Chinese people or those of Chinese descent. As these announcements demonstrate, Americans of Chinese descent are too often the victims of this aggression, and the FBI stands firmly with and for them. The other thing is important to note that these defendants, in effect, deleted a bunch of information before FBI was able to access it. So um, our investigation is ongoing, but obviously they obstructed the investigation. So we have to continue to work to figure out the full extent of uh, their activity here in the United States.